Former New Jersey Devil Adam Henrique netted his first career hat trick as the Ducks went duck hunting on the Devils. Why can't the Devils ever play well back to back? Why can they never just rack up the two wins and call it a night? We have a lot to break down in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked On Devils with Trey Matthews. scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. Rodora's got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Chalky, Plug a Play Announcer. Dell's are for Pucks and Pitchforks and also part-time credential Mia member Trey Matthews back from the Prudential Center. And let's start off today's episode with a couple of not so good tidbits. So fun fact number one, I did in fact try the new PB&J sandwich that they were selling at a few concession stands around the Prudential Center in promotion for the Jesper Bratt and Jack Hughes duo. Because if you guys recall a few nights ago, Jack Hughes said post game that the dynamic between him and Jesper was like peanut butter and jelly. So I had to try it. So I got the sandwich, no drink, no sides or anything. It came to a total of $8.53. The bread was cold. There was no pizzazz to it. It was just simple peanut butter and jelly. Honestly, something that you could get at a school cafeteria or something that you can make at home. There was really no nothing special about it or anything to write home and nothing that made me say like, oh, I, I'm definitely going to get this again. Unfortunately, it's nothing more than just a marketing gimmick. But moving on from food opinions, let's talk about this game. So a couple of not so good facts. That was the Ducks first win in regulation in over a month. The last time they won in regulation was November 14th. However, the last time they won a game, it was in a shootout a couple weeks ago on December 2nd. And former New Jersey Devil Adam Henrique netted his first career hat trick, ironically, at the Prudential Center. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about the game. Then in segment two, I had the chance to go to the Ducks locker room and speak with Adam Henrique and talk about his hat trick and also what's the difference between uh, preparing for this year's Devils team compared to last year, because similar to what I did with the Seattle Kraken, A few episodes ago, I talked to Dave Haxtell and Oliver Bjorkstrand. I said, like, is there any difference in the scouting or overall game plan? Because it seems like people are speculating that people are more prepared for the Devils this time around. And it seems like the Devils have been falling for a lot of those trap games because they've been losing some of these matchups that they really should be winning. And we're going to talk more about that later in segment one. And then the round it all off like I do with every postgame recap. I will compare the stats and give the Devils a letter grade. But before we talk about the game, let's address the elephant in the room. So a lot of people were on pins and needles and were wondering whether or not John Gibson would remain in Newark, New Jersey, in hopes that he would officially become a part of the Devils organization because he's been linked to a lot of trade rumors and people have been saying that the Devils are possible suitors for his services. And Going into this matchup, I believe that Vitek Vanacek was originally supposed to be the starter in net for the Devils. But Nico Dawes, he was called up uh, pregame, and a lot of people were caught off guard by that. And then it was later revealed that Vanacek was not feeling well physically, so he didn't even suit up in this game. And Dawes, as a result, was called up to back up Akira Schmidt. So a lot of people had their head spinning and, uh, and the idea tank just flowing with all sorts of speculations or thoughts. And then that uh, got even bigger when John Gibson, he got the start. He performed phenomenally for the Ducks. At one point, he robbed Eric Holla point blank range and seemed like Gibson was on full display. And it was a definitely a good, if you want to say it, like an audition in front of the Devils fans because people were definitely getting excited when they were seeing Gibson perform this well. Because I've said a couple episodes, I said that, I think Gibson is very underrated, and I think if you put him on a better team with a better defense, maybe you would see his numbers inflate just a little bit more because while he has led the league in losses three of the past four seasons, playing for the Ducks doesn't really help you all that much with all due respect. But 
Getting back to the elephant in the room, Gibson did not suit up in period three because it, apparently he became under the weather and Lucas Dostal had to come in in relief and he also performed really well and he shut the door down on the Devils. Now, a lot of people were wondering, was there going to be a trade mid-game or whatever the case might be? I was actually wondering too because I'm like, hmm, Vanacek's not feeling well physically and Gibson comes out before period three are they just trying to sweep this under the rug are they just trying to keep this low key I was definitely uh thinking about all those thoughts in the press box but then like I told you guys I had the chance to speak with Adam Henrique post game so I was actually at the Ducks locker room and uh John Gibson was the first person to leave the dressing room and uh, I spoke with a, a few people, and I'm just speaking on behalf of December 17th when I am recording this episode. There was nothing in the works for that day. It was just a normal business-like venture for the Ducks. Come in, come out. They had to hit the road uh, shortly after the game because uh, when this episode goes live, they'll be playing the Detroit Red Wings later on tonight. So I, I think it was true that John Gibson was under the weather and Vitek Vanacek, he just didn't play because he just wasn't physically uh, suited to do so. And Lindy Ruff revealed post game that he will have a further update for uh, Vitek uh, come game day on Tuesday, because when this episode goes live, the Devils actually have an off day. So based on the people I've been talking to, there was nothing in the works for that specific day. However, and this is just speculation on my end, this is not the information I got from the sources. This is just like, that's not to say that it won't happen or maybe something will happen down the line, just not for that specific day, December 17th, just saying that for clarity reasons so that way nothing gets out of context. So just for that specific game, guys, nothing in the works, just a normal game day. And it was just coincidental circumstances for those two goalies. Now, when looking at this game in general for the Devils, I would say that they got off to a very good start, but I think they got a little chaotic for their own good because I saw words being exchanged just 30 seconds into the matchup. We saw Colin Miller get into it with Sam Carrick. We saw Kevin Ball drop the, the mitts against Ross Johnston because a couple of minutes before that fight occurred, Kevin Ball was serving time for cross-checking Max Jones and Jones looked to be a little hurt. He needed help uh, getting off the rink. And Johnson found Ball as soon as Ball got out of the box. And unfortunately, Ball had to pay his dues. And we just saw him go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And for Jack Hughes, this was probably the most surprising thing. And for Jack, we always talk about how good he is at staying out of the penalty box. But for the second time this season, he was uh, given two penalties during the course of the game. And he looked pissed off. Like he was chirping the ducks like there was no tomorrow. Someone was getting underneath his skin. So if I had a nickel for every time Jack Hughes got two penalties assessed in the game, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it's happened twice this year, especially since he was a Lady Bing finalist just a few months ago. So uh, I think the Devils got a little chaotic for their own good. But when looking at this game in general, they got off to a very decent start because the one thing I was hoping that the Devils didn't do was fall into that trap game. So I think back to the San Jose Sharks game. I think back to the first time they played the Columbus Blue Jackets. Those are games that the Devils should have won. So the Devils had five early shots on Gibson about five minutes into the game, and they had a few rebound chances and loose pucks out in front that they could have capitalized on, but they didn't. Or once they did, Gibson would just rob them. And it took the Ducks seven minutes before getting a shot on Akira Schmidt. It came when they were on the power play, once again, after Kevin Ball cross-checked Max Jones. And at the conclusion of period one, Three of the five Anaheim shots uh, were on the power play and the whole period belonged to John Gibson because he was keeping his team in the game because the Devils were by and large the more dominant team in the first period of play. But luck be have it for the Ducks. Jesper Bragg got a penalty with 1.3 tenths of a second remaining in the first. So he obviously had to uh, serve most of it at the start of period two. And as we all know, the Devils penalty kill is not the best in the world. So as the Devils PK was winding down, I could see that the Ducks were inching closer and closer to Akira. And I was just like, oh, it's not looking good. So about 15 seconds remained and I was just hoping for the best. And unfortunately, Adam Henrique, he was just open on a tip in chance and he made, and he made it one to nothing in favor of the Ducks. So 
it was just another example of the Devils not doing well on the PK. They really got to improve that because it seems like every game when the Devils go into the penalty, they're going to allow a power play at some point or another. It doesn't matter how good a team's power play is or how weak up their power play is. No power play unit on the opposition is safe for the Devils to kill off. And they had another complete defensive meltdown. And it should have been a penalty assess uh, a, a few seconds prior to the Ducks. So I'll give the benefit of the doubt, but maybe interference or roughing or something like that, but not a referee. But once again, Adam Henrik was left wide open along with another player and he made it to nothing. So another defensive lapse for the Devils, but towards the end of period two, Michael McLeod and Curtis Lazar, great teamwork with one another, slicing and dicing their way through traffic. McLeod over to uh, to Lazar, Lazar back over to McLeod. McLeod finally fooled John Gibbs, and I was like, it was a long time coming, but the Devils finally deserved their first goal of the game, and I thought that was going to be a momentum shift for New Jersey. Well, I was completely wrong. So as we all know, Lucas Dostal, he was subbed in because Gibson was not really feeling all that well, and then Alex Killorn scored about five minutes into the third period to give the Ducks a 3-1 to one lead. And then a few minutes later, uh, Ross Johnson, he gets a tripping call assessed to him. So I'm just like, okay, Devils are going to go into the power play, and this is their last chance to try to make something out of it. And 10 seconds into their power play, Tyler Toffoli, he gets a slashing penalty that negated the power play. And then it was just a snowball effect from there. Devils lost their energy and it went right back to the Ducks. And I think the numbers show this, but I don't think the Devils allowed any grade A chances until the final period of regulation, which should really show you how much of a snowball effect it was in that period. The Devils just completely collapsed. It, it started off great, but then it just went right downhill really fast. There was no stopping it. And Adam Henrique, he got a hat trick, empty netter. We'll talk more about that in segment two but just bad circumstances for the devils getting chaotic for their own good and it's just another example where it's a back-to-back -back game and they still cannot really capitalize on it so according to pucks and pitchforks which is the site i work at the devils are one five and one in the second half of back-to-backs it's a problem that only persists since there are only nine more of these on the schedule if the devils didn't play the second half of a back-to-back -back this season they'd have the best win percentage in the Metro. So let's look back at some of the Devils' more notable back-to-back -back games. So first couple games of the year, first against the Detroit Red Wings and then the Arizona Coyotes. Devils won against the Red Wings, and then the very next day, they lost to the Coyotes in a shootout. Okay, so they walk away with a point, no harm, no foul, I guess. But then let's go to November 24th, the day after American Thanksgiving. They lost to the Columbus Blue Jackets but then they won in dominating fashion against the Buffalo Sabres. November 30th, they won in OT thanks to Luke Hughes against the Philadelphia Flyers. December 1st, they lost a stinker to San Jose, and they awoke a sleeping giant. And now here we are again. They beat Columbus in dominating fashion, and then they go up against the not-so-mighty Ducks who hadn't won a game in over a month, and they made the Ducks look like they were <laughs> like a sleeper team or something like that. So... Back-to-back -back games have been an absolute killer for New Jersey, and they got to fix it. So my overall thoughts on the game is that I think the Devils were a little too chaotic for their own good because in total, between both respective teams, there were 17 penalties, and eight of them belonged to the Devils. Albeit, you got people like Kevin Ball and Jack Hughes racking up a couple themselves, but eight penalties and 17 in total – just seemed like left, right, left, right. There was always a penalty of some sort. So Devils were just too chaotic. Lindy Ruff and the players acknowledged that post game. And it just seems like the Devils, they need to get better at back-to-back. -back. They need to fix that because with how tight the Metro is, looking back at San Jose, Columbus, and now Anaheim, those are three winnable games for you. You could have had anywhere from, I'd say, three to six points. Let's just say you take it into an OT for all three of them. At least you get three points. but now it's just like you walk away with nothing. And come the end of the year, that might come back to bite you, quite honestly. So that's my overall thoughts on the game. I know it's a lengthy post-game recap, but I got something special saved up for segment two. But 
Before we continue, I know you probably want to see the Devils play up close and personal. They have an off day, but they'll be taking on the Flyers on Tuesday. That'll be another good challenge for them. So uh, last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. It's all the things I love about the Game Time app. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Views from all seats, lowest price guaranteed, event cancellation protection, job loss protection. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's a place to find last minute seats. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, let's talk about an old fan favorite, and that is Adam Henrique, who probably had one of the biggest goals in devil's history because on may 25th 2012 i think we all know what happened devils are going up against the new york rangers game six and the devils are just one win away from advancing to the stanley cup finals and it's an overtime and adam henrique scores it and we all know that legendary doc emmerich call and adam henrique has been a fan favorite amongst the devils this course even after he was traded, because as we recall, November 2017, he alongside with Joseph Blandisi were traded to the Ducks in exchange for Sammy Votnin. So yeah, um, I think a lot of people still have warm feelings about Adam Henrique. It was nice to see that he got his first hat trick, honestly, with how popular he is amongst the devil's discourse. I don't think a lot of people are too mad about it. I'm sure it kind of sucks when you hear Adam Henrique first career hat trick in the Prudential Center. Wish it could have been in a devil's uniform, but unfortunately that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes. But when I'm looking at his goals, he just knew how to place himself at the right possible time because he knew how to fool the devils. That's what he was doing, especially for two of those three goals. So the first time he slipped right past John Marino and Kevin Ball, and he found the back of the net and he tipped it on in. Then the second go round, he just uh, was out in front, wide open. He got past Jonas Siegenthaler for his second goal, wide open opportunity. And Lindy Ruff talked about this post game where there was some miscoverage and just miscommunication that resulted in Adam Henrique being wide open. And this is something you have to go back to the video board about because that cannot happen. You allowed Adam Henrique to score three goals on you. For reference, dating back to when he was traded, so in November 2017, to January 2023, earlier this year. During that entire time span, he had only scored three goals against the Devils. In this game alone, he got three. Obviously, he got the hat trick. And he got the empty netter. And it, the Devils were sort of desperate in that regards because here's what happened. Frank Vetrano, he was given two penalties. He was uh, assessed a cross-check and also a roughing, both on Nathan Bastion. Nathan Bastion was only assessed one penalty. It was a roughing. So, for that final two minutes or so, the Devils were just looking to tip the odds back into their favor while the Ducks were shorthanded. So they decided to pull Akira from the game to put the Ducks in a very vulnerable position. But it was a million to one shot. Time was winding down. Seemed like the Devils had already lost the game. They would have needed some sort of miraculous type of comeback. But Henrik, he got the empty netter goal. So this time around, as you guys know, usually when I'm at the Prudential Center as a credential media member, I usually go into the locker room post game to talk to some of the players. Obviously, I do a press conference with Lindy Ruff, but this time I decided to uh, go to the opposing locker room and speak with Adam Henrik because I'm like, he's a fan favorite. He's a former devil. And I, I think a lot of people would be curious to know what his mindset is. Because for any player, I'm sure they act like when they're uh, traded, it's not really a big deal. But sometimes it can affect you because athletes are human at the end of the day. And Adam still has a lot of love towards uh, the devil. So I'm going to play you guys the entirety of his media availability. So hope you enjoy it. Check it out. First career hat trick in front of your home team. How does that make you feel? Uh, it's special. Um... You know, this place was special for me for a long time. Uh, a lot of a lot of great memories, a lot of great people here over my career. So I, I you know, I always enjoy coming back here, seeing seeing everybody and <clears throat> and, and playing in this building. So um, you know, kind of funny that uh, first one came here. How about first one since November fourteenth. Yeah, you know, big for us. We we knew that going into the game. Um, they came out hard in the first there. We we didn't get target game, but 
I think we did a good job after that, um, just trying to keep pressure on them and you know getting the special teams going on four on four and, um, and, and Dosty coming in big for us. Uh, I thought Troy had a tremendous game too and, and killer. So um, that's a big win for this team. How about scoring the goal in that net where you scored the? Yeah, the <laughs> second one was closer to it though, right. you know, yeah. in the crease. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, like, like I said, that it, uh, it's just a special place in my heart, my career. Um, anytime I'm here, you know, it's hard not to think of those those times in that run um, and everything kind of that went on there. Adam, from uh, 2017 to last January against the Devils, you had only scored three goals during that span. Tonight alone, you obviously you get a hat trick. Were there any uh, incentives or uh, extra motivation going into this specific matchup? No, no extra motivation. I think just, you know, it's it, through this streak uh, of not winning for our team, we, we felt like maybe we should have been on the other side of some of the games. Um, you know, some unfortunate bounces, a lot of one-goal games. Um, certainly games that we felt like, we had the opportunity to win. Um, and I think the guys have done a good job trying to just work through all that. Um, played a lot of good teams throughout that, but um, it, it's certainly nice to get a, a big win tonight and have to go right back at it again tomorrow. How about the way Gibson played in the first play? Kept you in the mid ball big saves. Yeah, I, I mean, he always does that. Um, I don't think he, he gets enough credit um, around the league for how good he is and how good he's been for us for, for a very long time. Um, you know, through through the downs, he's always been there and, and, and played well for us and somebody that we rely on a lot. Adam, it seems like uh, teams are starting to figure out the Devils a little bit more because last year they were a big surprise and this year they're not winning as consistently uh, compared to last year. Um, what's the difference between scouting for them this year compared to last year? Is there a change of structure or something like that? No, they're, you know, they're dangerous uh, on transition. Um, a lot of high-end talent over there um, we have to be aware of so you gotta you know you have to possess the puck and, and you can't turn it over you have to make smart plays at, at the lines they got a great team over there a lot of great young players um, some some good veteran mixes in there but you know I think across the league there's, there's a lot of teams that are, are are a lot better this year and deeper and I and I don't think you know that uh, maybe coming into the year a lot of people gave you know chances really to to a lot of teams and Thought more teams would run away with things, but it's certainly, um, you know, a big mix in the standings, and I th really feel like anybody can beat anybody any given night. So there you go. Henrique still has a lot of love towards the Devils, and I think that's why no one's really going to be mad that, yeah, it sucks that the Devils lost 5-1 to one and that they were outplayed, especially in period three against this Anaheim team, but Adam Henrique, he's a... Stand-up guy still has a lot of love and great memory shared with the Devils, and it was it was a while ago since he was traded. So, but but it just seems like he had some an extra chip on his shoulder for some reason. So, like I do with every post-game recap, we will compare the stats and give the Devils a letter grade. But before we do, let me tell you guys about FanDuel. So, as the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time getting in on the action. The app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over and unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. All right, let's compare the stats. Give the Devils that letter grade and get out of here and prepare for the Flyers. So... Shots on goal differential, 29 to 28 in favor of the Devils. Face-off percentage, 56.6% in favor of the Devils, 43.4% in favor of the Ducks. Power play, Ducks were 1 for 5 in their power play opportunities. Devils were 0 for 5. Keep in mind, the Ducks also got a shorthanded goal, thanks to Henrique. Hits, 10 to 8 in favor of the Ducks. Let's look at the penalty minutes as well. 29 to 19 in favor of the Ducks. Block shots, 17 to 10 in favor of the Ducks. Giveaways, Devils led the department 5-2. to two. Takeaways, Devils led the department once more 3-2. to two. So if I had to give this game a letter grade for a Devils, I, woo, I was thinking about giving them a failing grade, an F, but I'll give them a D because they got off to a good start, but that finish was just god-awful. So the Devils did come up aggressive, but John Gibson, it was just his period. It was just his time to shine, and the Devils did get robbed. So, like, if Eric Halla scores that goal that he got robbed on, it's it's a different game. So, the Devils did not play well at all. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. But I would say it's like a, a D type of performance because 
they were they they got off to a good start. It's not like they came out flat footed, but the period three, it was just bad circumstance after bad event after bad event after bad event, and it just snowballed. So I would much rather the Devils get off to a good start, but maybe just the finish wasn't there, as opposed to get off to a very slow start and then pick it up late when it's just like, what are you doing? Like the game's already over and you're decided to now play a better brand of game. But that's just me. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal X page app at Trey Matt four or the show's X page app at locked on devils as for his episode. That's the time I have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening. Once again,